Welcome to SVG TV News for Wednesday, October 31st, 2018. I am Rochelle Batiste with the details. Last week's independence activities saw an injection of approximately $1 million EC dollars into the local economy. Uh, that was the assessment of Minister of Tourism Cecil Sesmaki, who said at a news conference on Monday that the independence activities were a boost for tourism. And motor cars came into the country. If you multiply that by two additional persons, well, two persons at a minimum, that brings you 300 persons, and let's say they would have had a spend of $500, um, that's significant money pumped into the economy, 150000 there about, um, not taking into consideration hotels, rentals, food and drink. And the expo, um, we would have had um, persons coming in for that um, event as well, um, Guyana, Barbados, um, Trinidad, so they would have um, added um, to the, the, the spend. Minister Mackey said that the sports and cultural activities have helped promote tourism in SVG. He said there were 150 bikers from several Caribbean countries and the SVG Tennis Cup also had six visiting overseas teams participating. So those activities um, would have, well, we had to fit them into the, the month of October. Uh, as I indicated now, one of the fullest months where activities are concerned for the entire year. And if we could look at what that brings to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, for example, if we look at the six visiting uh, foreign teams, um, an average of 20 persons per team. The 2018-2019 cruise ship season opens tomorrow, November 1st, with the arrival of the Azura in Port Kingston at 8 a.m. And communications officer in the Ministry of Tourism, Jay Belmar, said the ship will have close to 5,000 persons on board. The Azura has 3,737 passengers and 1,226 crew. So we have quite a big ship that will be in on the 1st of November to kick off the month. St. Vincent and the Grenadines is expected to welcome more than 90,000 tourists in 272 port calls. Uh, Belmar said that unlike previous calls, Port Kingstown will have more calls this season have 272 calls to the destination this year. Kingstown will have 81 of those calls and Beckway will have 88 of those calls. So Kingstown, you're catching up to Beckway. Uh, meanwhile, the taxi services are looking to capitalize on the 2018-2019 cruise ship season. There are now two taxi associations with the which the Ministry of Tourism welcome, which are expected to be a boost to the transportation services for tourists. Uh, President of the SVG Taxi Service Association, Winston Pops Morgan, said they are hoping to do their part in selling SVG. plan to make it a collaborative effort between both of us. Um, we're going to work for one common good and to make sure that we sell our, our island to the, to the visitors that we see so that we can have multiple returnings, right? We want people's persons to say out there that they had a good experience here on the island because, you know, taxi drivers are the first ambassadors of your country. Sometimes they can make you, sometimes they can break you. Meanwhile, President of the SVG Professional Taxi Association, Arrington Bergen, has said they have 40 new registered cars and they plan to work with the other associations to benefit SVG. To enhance this tourism product is to make the best of promoting St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Not just about us as individuals, taxi drivers, but to make the best of promoting the new tourism season as in terms of working hand in hand. They are two associations, but we have collaborated in terms of working together to make St. Vincent and the Grenadines work as one accord. 
In other news now, clear and accurate data is of critical importance to policymakers if they are to make sound decisions. So said Kristin Bocage of the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFRA, as stakeholders in the health sector here uh, began a five-day child growth monitoring and surveillance training workshop yesterday. Bocage said the participants will be trained in the collection of data relating to the measurement of children as well as plotting, interpreting and reporting data collected from the health centers. She said the workshop, which runs until this Friday, November 2nd, also serves as a means of examining this country's progress relating to the implementation growth a record standard set by the World Health Organization. We pull everything together and report on that. And the final thing, um, you know, in 2010, the new growth records, clinic records, were introduced to the health centers in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and they all based against the backdrop of the 2006 um, growth charts and standards released by WHO. What we're doing today as well is going through those records to see how they have been filling all the records, if there are discrepancies, if we see that there are areas that need improvement, and at the end of the day, a report would be prepared um, for the ministry so that further um, enhancement of the nurses. Bocard said it is important for data to be collected in a correct manner to give policymakers a clear picture of what needs to be done. Would be put in place. All right, thank you. How would this benefit St. Vincent, though? Oh, this will this will benefit St. Vincent and the Grenadines because you know, um, to develop programs and projects, you need to have evidence or information. So it's very difficult for you to plan a program if you're not sure what is happening with the nutritional status of your children. So, for instance, you may want to go in one community to do something, but it may be different in another community because you have different health um, conditions to deal with. The only way you would have an accurate um, sense of what is happening is if you collect the data in a standardized manner, you analyze that data and you report on it and you have it documented so you can use it as evidence to prepare your programs and projects. The important lessons learned while conducting the juvenile justice reform project must be implemented in order to make a meaningful impact on the lives of the youth. Uh, so said the Director General of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, the OECS, uh, Dr. Didicus Jules, as the Regional Advisory Group for the Juvenile Justice Reform Project met yesterday at the Beach Cromers Hotel. The project seeks to strengthen the juvenile justice systems in the OECS and rehabilitate and reintegrate into society youths under the age of 18 who came into conflict with the law. Yesterday's meeting was intended to provide a status update of the program and the implementation of a work plan, highlight some of the lessons learned so far and challenges faced, and develop strategies to improve the effectiveness of juvenile justice reform within OICS states. Uh, Dr. Jules encouraged all the stakeholders to use the lessons learned to develop plans and policies for the benefit of the youths. There are lessons in this project, for example, that have deep implications for the way in which we deal with juveniles, particularly at risk with the law. Um, there are institutional changes, there are structural changes that need to come from this, and unless we ensure that the lessons of this project are translated into the DNA of our justice system, into how we deal with child protection, even how ministries of family affairs conduct their business. It would all have been a waste of money at the end of the day. So <clears throat> bearing that in mind, um, I think we need to look to, as we execute this project, to widen the partnerships, to bring more and more people on board in order to make those fundamental changes. Uh, Dr. Jules encouraged the country representatives to urgently address priority areas. He further challenged member states to use the opportunity which is available to facilitate meaningful change. The, I want to encu um, encourage the country reps to give greater urgency to implementing the priorities that they have identified. Because let's also be clear that we at the Commission 
are not directors of projects. We are servants of projects. We cannot tell member states and dictate to member states the pace or the things that they need to execute. These initiatives are jointly designed. Everyone has their role to play. And we expect that member states will, of course, there will always be challenges, but we are here to provide whatever support, whatever encouragement, whatever mechanisms that we have or levers that we can press to help member states to move forward. Meanwhile, Director of Director General of the Office of USAID, Kep Sutton, said that USAID is proud to play a role in developing a project which will touch the lives of the youths. He said he was impressed by the efforts being made to address the security situation in the OECS subregion. Sutton said he looks forward to working with OECS uh, stakeholders to ensure the success of the project. Easy to get um, caught up in the day-to-day -day of the project and making sure that we meet our deadlines and our goals, but we always have to have a mind on the future. And now that we find ourselves in JGRP past the halfway point with about a year and a half left, we need to be thinking what is that future? What's going to happen in a year and a half when potentially this project is coming to an end? With the way that our government funding works, we can never be sure of continued funding beyond the current cycle. And so we have to be planning, again, as Dr. Jules re was referencing, to put these systems and these actions that we've been taking into the DNA, into the systems of our governments, into the systems of the region, so that those structures and those activities continue to happen after the project is ended. And I'm looking forward to doing that with all with you over the next few years. The University of the West Indies has provided educational opportunities to people of the region for 17 years and Vincentians are being given the opportunity to celebrate this milestone with the university. This as the institution began a series of activities to mark the historic milestone. Activities began at the start of this month with a fair at the Old Public Library, giving the public the opportunity to showcase their books and artwork. Former head of the local UWI Open Campus, Dr. Adrian Fraser, also delivered a lecture last night where he gave an historical background on the university. The current head of the local UWI Open Campus, Deborah Dalrymple, told SVG TV News uh, that the final event titled Our UWI, Our Music, on November 10th at the Community College will highlight each of the seven decades through cultural performances. And the idea behind that is that we are highlighting a genre of music or culture. It started off being music, but now we've moved into cultural activities, whether it's poetry, dance, skits, that really highlight each a decade of the 70 years. So from 1948 to, 50, um, to 58, we'll have a particular activity from 58 to 60, all the way up to 2018. A very exciting uh, performances. We are going to have um, um, Skakes and Bomani and, um, you know, numbers of them, and the poets, dancers, and we're hoping that the alumni would come out and really support this, and the general public, of course. I think for many people, it would be a very delightful evening just to watch the cultural development over the 70 years. So that's going to be our flagship event. So if you don't mind me putting a little plug for it now, so that people would, um, would be interested. Dalrymple said proceeds from the event will be used to provide bursaries for UWI students. It is, we are asking a contribution of $100, and um, I said to someone this morning, $100 would not even begin to cover the amount of work that Rodney Small and his team have put together to do the research necessary to do this project, and also any proceeds, anything that's left after we've met, met of our expenses would go towards bursaries for our students. But it's one bursary, two, three, so that we can really have a true, um, you know, mark the milestone in a meaningful way. She said the university has achieved much over the years and can be proud of being named one of the top universities in the world. For St. Vincent, like a 
almost the entire region, the university has provided training in practically every form of, um, of endeavor. We have been in education, in law, in engineering, in medicine, in agriculture. Like I said, an incubator for a lot of development in the region. So St. Vincent and Grenadine, certainly we are very grateful to the university as the region is for only 70 years. 70 years is a very short period of time in the life of a university. We have universities who are hundreds of years old. And for that, um, we really will have to be grateful. Um, just recently, we were named in the top 5% worldwide of the university rankings, which is something we are very, very proud of. And um, we hope that we'll continue to improve. It's not just about the courses, but it's about the research and the level of your faculty and the, the quality of your students. Um, we can be found all over the world, all of our students. And we are very, very grateful and very happy to have that ranking. And, we'll, and hopefully we will improve it over the years. More than 15 choirs are expected to participate in this year's police caroling competition with the hope of dethroning the reigning champs, the Western Carolers. In a release issue today, the police said their credit union will once again partner in sponsoring the caroling competition for the sixth consecutive year. And the credit union's treasurer, Michael Charles, today handed over a sponsorship check in the sum of 7,800 EC dollars to acting Commission of Police Colin John uh, to offset expenses for this year's competition. The acting commissioner thanked the board and management of the PCCU for partnering with the police force, thus making it possible to have the Caroline competition for another year. He said the police Caroline competition is now a household name throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines and is highly anticipated by members of the public. The police Christmas Caroline competition will take place on Friday, December 14th on the grounds of the Central Police Station, commencing at 7.30 p.m. under the theme, This is the Season of More and Merriment.